in the last segment what we have discussed the different parameters related to fiber length how do we express the fiber length by different methods different parameters of expression of fiber length and also we have discussed different parameters for expressing the fiber length distribution. Now, we will discuss here the different methods of measurement of fiber length that is staple fiber length. First there is a simplest method it is a hand stapling method this is a very simple method here here it is as I have mentioned in last class here it is actually done by trained classer. So, any person so any uh, untrained person if he cannot do and if he does it will be erroneous. So, if there will be wrong result <coughs> the selection is actually it is important with the selecting a sample and preparation of the fibers by hand doubling and drawing to give a fairly well straightened tuft of fiber about half inch. So, first we have to select the fiber like we have selected fiber then what we have to do we have to double draft and double draft and double in this way we have to do repeatedly to make the fiber strand fibers totally parallel ok. In this way we can do. Now, if we see here if you can see here. So, fibers here are drafted repeatedly. So, this is we are drafting and then it is doubling. So, drafting and doubling drafting and doubling in this way we are do repeatedly. So, that we get a fairly straightened fiber strand and suppose it is a black velvet the I the norms is that we have to keep the fiber strand on the black velvet and here after placing what we will get we will get the fibers in this form. In last class also I have explained little bit. So, in this way this is the fiber strand majority of fiber will be at the center okay, and maximum fiber and if the background is black here black then we can see through the fiber the portion which is not covered. Okay. Now, we will see a particular at the edge there will be a clear edge we can see and where density has suddenly changed this is denser portion and suddenly changed. So, this is a line A and this is line B. So, right side at this point it suddenly changed. So, this we can draw rough line here and here also you can draw rough line. So, this distance a b distance is a it is called staple length ok and and the width is approximately width of the fringe is it is about half inch. This is laid on flat black background and thus because black background against that the white fiber normally. So, we can see clearly and the staple length is measured ok. The shorter fibers will lie on the body of the tuft it will not never go at the edge because we had we have done repeated hand straightening and uh, drafting and doubling and we have to take precaution we have to take care that no short fibers are lost ok. So, fibers all the fibers are taken we are not actually discarding any fiber ok. So, 
the it will uh, short fiber will lie on the body of the top it will not the extreme. So, an extreme ends that steeps as I have mentioned will not be the limit used for measuring the staple length. So, we will not take the extreme end into account ok. We will take the limit where the there is a clear change in the density suddenly at the from the denser portion it has gone to the lighter portion that we can see the clear line rough line we can see. So, the clear uh, the class are choose the length where there are reasonably well defined edge. So, this extreme edge is not taken, but well defined edge is there. So, between these two edges that is the staple length. So, this is done by the experienced person and the problem here is that it is a subjective in nature. So, different classer will land up with different evaluation for same cotton. So, this will give us rough idea about the overall length of the cotton, but we cannot take any decision based on the this result. This will give okay, this cotton is having the longer length, this is having a short length, but it will uh, we will not take any action on that. Okay. And so, looking at this problem of uh, this hand stapling and judging, so there is another instrument which has been developed which is called the it is a mechanized version of this hand stapling technique okay. and this is known as the Sarli photoelectric stapler. The principle is exactly same here of oh, Sarli photoelectric sense, um, uh, stapler and again we can come back here. So, what we have seen here in photoelectric stapler the same way we can prepare the fiber strand like fiber tuft we can prepare and here in earlier hand stapling technique we have seen the classer will decide the distance a and b line a and b this this is based on his experience ok but that that subjectivity we can remove we can eliminate by using one technique it's a sharly photoelectric stapler where in this same fringe is taken and the the point where sudden change in density of the fibers are located. So, point A and point B will be located automatically using the photoelectric system. Now, here the system is that suppose one belt conveyor belt is there, this is the conveyor belt where we are putting this fiber okay, the fiber frame. This is moving from one direction to another. So, this is suppose this fiber fringe is placed here okay, this fiber fringe we are placing here on this end and this is moving. Now, here somehow the light two light source is actually projected here two light sources okay, L 1 L 2 two light sources and the distance of these two sources are very very small say may be few millimeter 1 millimeter or 2 millimeter distance at distance. And from here the sensor will give it will after reflection it will give to one photoelectric sensor another here from here it is going suppose another photoelectric sensor. Okay. Now, this sensor will sense the intensity of light this will also sense the intensity of light. Now, when the pipe and this is moving fiber fringe is moving along with the belt at the center when at the center suppose here the two lights are falling here. So, that this will give as this is a dense portion. So, this will send the signal almost equal signal. So, this photoelectric sensor P E 1 or P E 2 they are receiving the light of same intensity. So, this will and the difference of the intensity is measured difference of intensity of this light which is received by photoelectric sensor is measured here. 
So, as and this is calculating the say a, a P 1 minus P e 2, 2 this difference is measured here. So, as the difference here is exactly same, so, so this will give a signal of 0, there is no difference. Now, as it is moving, suppose it is moving from the, the at this point it is giving signal, okay. it is taking signal at this point. Okay. At the, so, this is fringe is moving. So, when it is reaching at this point, at what will happen? Here the signal of one photoelectric sensor will be entirely different from another photoelectric sensor. Okay. At this point, so here, so when it is reaching here, so this point there will be very high deflection because it is a difference, difference will be very high at this point, so there will be a deflection. So, this point is noted. So, this is the point, suppose this is time t 1, at the time t 1 there is a maximum deviation at this point. Okay. Now, it is it is moving further, this is moving continuously. So, at when it is reaching at b point the source the light, so b point this suppose one photoelectric sensor will give one sensor send signal, another photoelectric sensor will send signal in entirely different way, but it will be in the opposite way. So, this way and it has deflection maximum deflection will be on the other side because it is a difference. So, this time we will measure the time say T 2. So, the time difference between these two, so T 2 minus T 1 is the time difference between these two extreme point A and B that is a, and if we know the speed of the conveyor belt then from there we can calculate the we can calculate the distance travelled by the conveyor belt where there are two extreme deflections are there. So, the what is this distance? This distance is the stepping length, this is the thing here it is a actually mechanized way of measuring uh, evaluating the stepping length. With this principle here suddenly uh, photoelectric stepler works here, it is a quicker measurement of length stepping length. So, photoelectric sense um, uh, stapler measures the uh, stapel length. It is an objective measuring pre technique of earlier hand stapling method. So, in earlier method what we have done which is done by the classer, classer does this judgment by I, here it is a by photoelectric sensor, but technique is principle is exactly same. Okay. Here there is no subjectivity it is an objective technique. Okay. Now, this is the principle. Okay. Now, here this is the fiber fringe I have mentioned, okay. it is placed on some black say uh, pad it is placed and, and, and this is the placed on conveyor belt, it moves gradually and one light source is there which is actually which gives the light, it is a light source through the lens arrangement and it is a double slit. From here the two light sources are coming. Okay. So, this is one light source, another light source and ultimately these are falling in two different points which are very close to each other and from there this point the reflection it the photoelectric sensor say C 1 photoelectric cell C 1 and C 2 they are receiving the light. Okay. So, when there is nothing here, so they, this is away from this point this fiber fringe. So, the again that time also it is getting signal. So, this signal the signals received by C 1 and C 2 are will be will be same exactly same. So, and this is a sensor which is actually say gets signal from this two sensor, this is the meter which shows the deflection and the deflection here is the actually difference between the 
signal from photoelectric cells are C1 and C2. This is the difference. And at this point, as they are receiving the same quantity of uh, light or intensity, so this difference will be 0 here. And gradually it is moving, still it is in the black portion, also it is giving the same signal, it will give there is no deflection. But as soon as it is the that particular line where the intensity suddenly changes and that time the maximum deflection will be there. Okay. Otherwise, there will be little bit deflection because when it is coming under this action, under the action of these fibers, there will be reflection will start, but the point where the maximum change in intensity there will be deflection. And similarly, for other side when it is actually releasing from this point, this is moving out, that point also there will be deflection, but deflection will be on the other side, opposite side. Now, now let us see the animation here. Now, the light source is generated, this is the light source and through it is coming through double slit, it will actually move out and going to the at some mirror is there and mirror reflects and these are coming two sources are light and it is reflect. Okay. The, now, the fringe is coming. Now, this see there is no deflection, no deflection and at a point maximum deflection that point has been noted down okay, time. Now, again it is coming, it is going to the center towards the center. So, that center then it will be now here as soon as it is coming to the towards the center, there will be no deflection and again it is moving out. The point with the maximum density difference will again show as the maximum deflection in other direction. So, that will give us this is the, the so this is the point, these are the points, so, this is the point A and here suppose it is a point B, this distance, this is the distance here it is a staple length. Okay. The fringe of fibers are placed okay, over the black velvet after preparation. Why black velvet plan? Because it will give clear idea about the reflection. The density of the fringe of fibers should be such that the that it traces the black velvet can be seen through the central part of the where density is highest. So, the density we cannot have highly dense material. So, the density should be very thin okay. so that at still uh, even even through the central part the black velvet at the bottom of the fringe sh should be visible okay that way we have to we cannot have very thick fringe okay that's important the photoelectric stapler detects the distance between where the density gradients are maximum the density gradients are maximum in either side. Two photoelectric cells connected opposite to each other depending on the light intensity the opposed cells pass a current which is proportional to the difference between the intensity. Okay. Variation in current are shown in sensitive indicator as the fringe is advanced inside the instrument two maximum density gradient points are detected this distance is staple length okay maximum deflections of galvanometer in opposite direction so that's the distance we can calculate and from that the photoelectric stapler that staple length if we multiply by 1.1 we will get a rough idea about the effective length. This is the typical equation. Next is that Kohm's diagram. Okay. 
and this Comsota diagram is typically used for uh, cotton again. Here the fibers are arranged in terms of length. Okay. Now, let us see how the Comsota diagrams are formed. This is the length, okay. here is the proportion. Suppose we have the fibers, these are the fibers. So, these fibers are first we have to take say this is O A and here it is a and this is the length here is a percent of fiber. Now, the system is that we will pick by some means we will pick the longest fiber first and we will arrange we will put the longest fiber at the left and left side left most side and we will select fiber almost with a very few fibers of the same length. So, longest fiber we are putting here the next length we will put here gradually length in the order of descending order by length we will put in this fashion. One care has to be taken here, which is very important. The density of alignment of placing the fiber should be exactly same. This density, like we cannot put a fiber here, it is a certain we cannot put fiber next fiber here, there should not be gap. The gap between fibers should be exactly very even, it, these are the with the even. Okay. So, ultimately, we will get a curve like this, this is known as the shorter diagram. Okay. So, let us see how the shorter diagram is formed. Now, starting with the longest fiber as I have shown, so with the even way we are aligning the fiber, this is the shorter diagram. Now, what is that? A Q point has been that is O A is the length of the longest fiber okay, first. Now, Q is the point which is midpoint of O A and from Q parallel to the horizontal line x axis we are drawing one line and from that line the that is the that is intersecting a point P dash. Okay. From P dash we are drawing a vertical line and from there we are having one point O k, O k is a point which is one fourth of O p okay. and from k point we are drawing one vertical line k k dash and we are taking half of O k, half of O k from half of O k we are drawing which is point S, we are drawing one again one horizontal line which is intersecting the curve at point say R dash. So, from R dash we are drawing another line vertical line R R dash that R R dash is the length and from there this is the k s is the half of that. Now, from r r dash, so o r is the length, from o r we are dividing o r into 4 equal part. Okay. So, o k o l is the one fourth of o r, okay. o l is one fourth of it. So, then from l we are drawing again one vertical line, this is that means it is a second approximation. First approximation of upper quartile length is k k dash. So, second approximation of upper quarter length is L L dash. So, effective length is defined in another way which is the second approximation of upper quarter length is known as the effective length. Okay. And from 
this is n l dash. So, this is as we have mentioned earlier the O l equal to m r okay. that is m r is O m is the three fourth of O r okay. and from there we can calculate the dispersion percent. So, we can see O q is a one fourth or half of O a then k s k s is a half of k k dash o k o k is a one fourth of o p that is the first approximation and o l is one fourth of o r that is the second approximation and that is the length a l l dash is the effective length and o m is the o m is three fourth of o r that is the lower quartile length. So, this upper quartile length minus lower quartile length is known as interquartile range as we have mentioned and from there we can calculate the dispersion percentage okay. and uh, the American staple length equal to 0.91 multiplied by effective length that we can calculate. From the this shorter diagram we can also calculate the mean length. Okay. Now, the mean length calculation we can we must understand here how to calculate the mean length this is just it goes in opposite way to that of the frequency distribution curve. So, here frequency distribution is in opposite way means here first we know the curve then we are trying to frame the frequency distribution. In normal case we know the frequency distribution then from that we can plot the curve. Okay. Here it is a the histogram or different types of curve we draw if we know the frequency distribution, but here our curve is known. Okay. We know the curve, so from there and in x axis the values are fiber length in terms of say one eighth of an inch. That means, this 4 means 4 by 8 of an inch that means, this is means it is a half an inch 8 means 8 by 8 that is 1 inch. So, 12 by 8 inch like this okay. this is the length and in x axis it is a cumulative frequency. Okay. So, this distribution we can calculate we can get fiber length of 1. Now, try to see here how to get this distribution here. Now, this is the fiber length okay, and up to say 13 or say 12, this is a 12th of an inch. Now, from there we calculate we get the histogram here. How to get histogram? From this point and this is the point where it is actually this point where it is a intersecting that point is at the midpoint. Now, let us see again. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, say 11. Okay. Now, say from this point we are trying to get the histogram. This is the point where now we are drawing it here and this distance suppose it is equal to this distance. So, and th where the point it is intersecting it is a it is a midpoint okay. and this is one bar diagram. This is number 1. Now, next point is that so this is so length is what is the length? Here length is 10 and width we know width is this point we can calculate. Now. So, this is the say w 1 is the width. So, the area of this rectangle will be 10. Now, here it is 10 and now what we are doing? We are trying to draw another histogram here. 
this another histogram here. Now, and from this point, it is uh, we are extending to equal point. This is second one. So, now we are trying to measure the area of this rectangle. It is almost it shows square, but it can be rectangle. Now, second one will be this one because this is the point intersecting. So, this point this distance equal to this distance okay. in this way we are forming. Now, this is another rectangle and from this point again we are drawing another rectangle here. This is the, we are extending it up to the same point and this is the point. So, we are getting another rectangle here. This is second one. In this way, we will go. So, first, if we know that this, this, this distance is if we know this is w1, if we know this distance w2, this distance w3, in this way, if we know. So, what will be the area of this rectangle or it looks about say it is a square, this is will be this will be the what is the height? it is 1 okay. and this width is w 1, w 1 into 1. Similarly, what about second one? This is second one, second one will be again the height is 1, width will be this one up to this point. So, w 2, so this is this is w 2. Similarly, this one will be W3. Okay, so this will be one plus one multiplied by W2 plus one multiplied by W3 because we have divided into equal one eighth of an inch in this way. So in this way, we can calculate the this will be the total area of the curve under the curve. That is the actually total area. And if we divide by the that width, summation of width, we will get the, if we divide the summation of width, we will get the height, mean height. So, here we can see, so this is the height, this is the height, this distance is the 1 unit and here as per the curve, we are getting 1.6 here. This distance from the 0 point, it is 4.5, this is 8.5. 13.5, 19.5, 27.5. In this way, it is the distance. Okay. Now, here the area of this rectangle, first rectangle is 1 into 1.6. Similarly, area of this rectangle, second rectangle, this total rectangle, this one, height is 1 and width is 4.5. This is the 4.5 second rectangle, third rectangle, fourth, in this way we will go. So, in everywhere the height is always it is a 1 unit. So, in this way if we calculate the mean length and total length is 64, total length it will be 64. So, this multiply divided by 64 and 7.1 is the length of the 7.1 means 7.1 by 8 inch is the length mean length of the fiber. So, mean length of fiber we can calculate from this Comstotter diagram. Next is that single fiber length measurement. So, single fiber length measurement normally it is not done in our this uh, industry because it is time consuming, but for uh, specific research or for specific defect analysis we can always do. Okay. Each fiber is taken separately and gently straighten over the slide. So, fiber you have to remove all the creams, okay, all anything any bent anything any loop type formation. So, we will have to 
straighten the fiber and gently put on the slide and length is recorded. We can record the length. So, the problem is that it is tedious and time consuming process and mill practice it is not in used, but for any research or anything we can use this process used where number of fibers are small. Suppose, we want to measure the fiber length taking out from a yarn, small yarn. I want to know the fiber average fiber length some I, I have suppose this quantity of yarn and I want to guess this is the yarn I am it is available with me. I want to know the length of fiber. So, here from here I cannot use the comb shorter principle or I cannot use any other principle, but what I can do I can take out fiber few fibers and I can take I can measure the length. Okay. So, that I can get a rough idea about the length of fiber. Then length measurement by weighing method this is actually done this is used in uh, um, woolen industry and also in cotton, cotton industry. So, what it is done after combing. So, you can comb or we can a uh, we can uh, do multiple drafting and drawing. Okay. The fibers are placed on velvet pad then what we do we rank into groups. So, that the length range in each group is about 3 millimeter. So, we are grouping the fibers of different length group and the groups are then weighed on sensitive balance and mean length is. So, again we can see. So, that this is a suppose this is the fiber length distribution we are trying to group the fiber here. So, this is one group we are taking the mass second group taking the mass third group. Mill length this is nothing but mill length based on weight. So, from this group length group we are taking. So, w is the weight. Okay. So, from there we can calculate the mill length. So, length group is w length group is L and w is the mass of length group. So, w 1 L 1 plus w 2 L 2 plus w 3 L 3 in this way and divided by total weight and upper quarter length is that the one fourth of the fibers by mass is longer that than that length that is the upper quarter length. So, the rank first you have to rank into the groups of so that the length are arranged okay, arranged between the groups. Okay. So, this we have already discussed the upper quarter length. Next principle is that clamp taft method it is a by weighing principle. Clamp trapped method up basically this is used mainly for sliver or any parallel trapped. So, if we want to measure the fibers length of fiber from the sliver. So, what we have to do we have to clamp the tuft first. So, this is a side view. So, here it is a clamped the fibers are clamped with a, a clamp of known width here the width of the clamp is w it is a known. So, after clamping so this is clamped. So, we are removing the fibers then we are what we are doing we are by combing we are trying to remove the loose fibers. So, whatever loose fibers which are not gripped these are removed the combing by combing it is removed. Now, these fibers are it is a total clamped fiber. Okay. Now, after that what we do 
we can cut the fiber we cut the fiber from this uh, which is which are projected from both the sides this side and this side we are cutting the fiber so combing to remove the loose ungripped fiber okay then we are so these are the fibers which are gripped the protruding fibers are cut whatever protruding fibers are cut but they are kept separately we have to take the mass okay clamp and weight we are from both the sides we are cutting okay now then after that we are opening the clamp in the clamp what we will see the fibers of this size rectangular with the parallel length are entrapped here so that those fiber will weigh separately the clamps then open and fibers inside the clamp are weighed separately so we have now two masses so one is the combed fiber masses another is the uh, that is projected fiber another is the weight of the clamped fiber now the total fiber mass under clamp or under combed so if we add this two we will get the total fiber mass now total mass of combed taft is that mass of cut tufts so that is the cut tufts and mass of clamped taft this is a clamped taft okay this tufts now this is the mass of cut taft and mass of clamped tufts okay now this are then this is the total mass now the mean fiber length by total mass of clamped taft that means total mass that is equivalent to mean fiber length if we compare with the width of the clamp by clamp taft mass clamp taft mass means this is the mass where this is the mass of fiber of uh, within the clamp here assumptions are that the fibers are arranged uniformly okay they are arranged uniformly so mean fiber length by total mass of comb taft that is the total mass it's including the clamp okay so mean fiber length we can calculate using the formula w by multiplied by total mass of clamp taft by mass of clamp taft okay now if the the distributions are same distribution of the fiber is same then mass of clamp taft will always be same irrespective of the length of the fiber now we should be very uh, careful here this is important now suppose we have two types of fibers this is a clamp fiber a fiber b okay now these fibers are from same source same fiber okay that means same uh, uh, variety same fineness okay these fibers are actually arranged same fineness with the same fashion same fiber same fineness arranged in the same density and width is exactly same okay now as this width is same and here the fibers are same now which one is longer 
apparently the b 1 is longer a is smaller. Now, if we take the if we cut and if we take the only mass of this clamped mass of these two fibers clamped mass. So, only we are trying to we are interested in clamped mass what will happen the with the clamped mass the clamped mass of both the fibers A and B will be equal ok clamped mass why because they are same fiber, but they are this one is longer that means the total mass of B total mass total um, combed mass will be B is higher than mass total of A. Why? Because of its mean length that means total mass is actually it is proportional to the mean length. Considering the same fibers their width and everything is some. So, this will get nullified this will be constant approximately. So, here if we see the mean length is approximately proportional to the mass of the comb top considering that the this clamped mass will be equal if the same you are trying to say the same fiber. So, this width is constant for two fibers the width of the clamp same fluid and mass of clamp tuft is if we assume it same my I am talking about ideal ideally to get concept ok. So, mean fiber length is proportional to the combed fiber tuft and when the mass of clamp tuft. Now, to generalize that the, 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 the it is not possible always to have the same width same uh, it is not always possible to have exactly same mass of the clamp tuft it is not possible. So, we can have different to generalize these things we are dividing it by the mass of the clamp tuft. So, that is how we are getting the mass. So, this is the formula. So, width tot multiplied by total mass of comb tuft by mass of clamp tuft. Okay. This way we will get the mean length of fiber. It is called mass bias length. So, mean length is proportional to the mass of the comb tuft only in the case where mass of comb tuft is constant that is the that is the ideal case. Next is that using the uh, photoelectric method and which is done in fibrograph by using the fibro sampler ok fibro sampler. So, as we have already discussed here it is an optical method of measuring the density along the length of the tuft of parallel fiber. It is a it measures the density it is a number of fibers it measures samples are prepared by fibro sampler. So, fibro sampler is there so which actually grips the fiber from randomly from any point. So, here in fibro sampler we try to we actually the sample it is a length by a sample longer lengths are long fibers with longer length are actually basically will have higher probability to get selected. So, after that as has been explained that five, uh, final tuft is in the form of this this type of form and which are actual loop form. So, we can see once again this animation and uh, this is the principle of fibrogram. So, this is the clamp and the scanning process is going on a light source the scanning process is going on and where it sorts the number of fibers depending on the density of fiber. So, it is proportion of number of fibers initially it was 100 percent 
then it is gradually as the distance increases proportion of fiber reduces. So, the we are getting the this curve which we have seen it is a fibrogram okay. and, and then automatically the sensor will get the data and automatically the all the parameters will be calculated. This is the way. So, fibers are uh, clamped here fiber 1 then it is getting loop form okay. in this way it is a it forms the loop. Here we have two assumptions are there a fiber is caught on the comb in proportional to its length as compared to the total length of all fibers in the sample. So, longer fiber has higher probability and the point where it is caught is at random along its length. Okay. So, they will be they can be selected at any point at random. Here is uh, actually this is uh, very important to understand if we get the fibrogram is there any relation between the shorter diagram what is the actually relation can we convert this fibrogram to the shorter diagram it is totally it is a totally different approach we cannot compare the fibrogram with the shorter diagram. So, let us see the it will be very easy to understand if we take one easy example okay, then we can incorporate complexity. First thing is that we let us see it is a cut polyester fiber of equal length all the fibers are of exactly same length same lens of fiber. Now, if we try to form the shorter diagram, the shorter diagram let us see the shorter diagram. This is the shorter diagram. Now, if what is shorter diagram? We have to arrange the fiber based on the length. So, suppose this is the length, longest fiber, okay. length and this is the proportion this is the longest fiber second long second fiber is second length again it will be next length third it will be again this length So, what is this? This is the diagram shorter diagram of polyester fiber of same length. So, this is the cut length where we are arranging the fiber of same length okay, shorter diagram. Now, let us try to form the fibrogram of polyester. Now, in fibrogram so, this is the suppose these are the fibers polyester fiber same length as we have explained earlier I have explained earlier the assumption first assumption that longer fiber will have higher chance to be selected is not present first assumption is not present here. We have to concentrate on only the second assumptions what is the second assumption? The fibers are selected randomly at any point. So, these are the fibers. Now, this is the clamp. Clamp. So, one fiber which is selected. So, suppose, the, suppose, suppose this is the fiber. These are the fibers. Okay. Now, I, I am selecting this fiber fiber 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 fibers are there. Fiber 1 is selected at the tip point. 
there is no end. Fiber 2 is selected, this is at T point, fiber 2 is selected here at this point. So, fiber 3 is selected at the this point say at the midpoint. Fiber 4 is selected at this point. Fiber 5 is selected here. Fiber 6 is selected at this point, end point. Now, if we rearrange this fiber based on the length, we are rearranging the fibers. Rearranging the fibers, so this two fibers are longest fibers, so we are rearranging the suppose two fibers, it can be three fibers. Next is that this fibers, these two fibers. this two have been selected, this two have been selected, next this two. This two point. Next is this two. Okay. This two has been selected, okay. Next is this two. And then say small smaller some smaller fibers will be there. We can see that okay. here we will see the curves will be exactly triangular. So, this is the probability wise probability wise any at any point fibers can be selected. So, if we try to draw the fibrogram, the fibrogram is will be typically straight line, because the at this point there will be some fiber like this at this any point. So, we will see this will be the staple and in case of cotton the things will be much more complex because there it has got its own variability. That is why for cotton this fiber is diagram is like this and here like this. This is the if I draw with the black a this is for cotton, this is sorted diagram for cotton and fibrogram for cotton. It has got its own variability as well as it is a randomly selected. So, fiber length variation is there and the even it has got its own variability plus it is selected randomly and folded that is why it is so, it will never reach uh, uh, that is the, the maximum fiber length always, it will be less than that, it is much less than that. So, now try to see here, this is the fibrogram. We can see how to superimpose the fibrogram and uh, sorted diagram. For cot for polyester, we have seen, okay, and this is the fibrogram of cotton. X-axis, the length direction is given shown in red color, and proportion is shown in 
green color and in shorter diagram proportion is in x axis and length is in y axis red color and this is in this is the shorter diagram. Now, if we for same fiber we are trying to superimpose just to get idea about the difference between that is uh, fibrogram and shorter diagram. Now, now try to see it is a superimposing this is the way this is shorter diagram shorter diagram and this one is the fibrogram for same fiber. So, there is no relationship we cannot get the same parameter from both the things these are totally separate we should not get confused. Okay. So, we will continue with this segment in the next class till then thank you.